right, folks, welcome back to Goal to Goal with Paul Ticken and Lisa Johnson. We're going to talk a little bit about the upcoming Dolphins-Patriots game. Lisa, big game this week. I know we were all hoping Jimmy G would fall flat on his face against the Cardinals. Apparently not, even without Gronk. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. What do you make of the upcoming matchup? Oh, boy. New England always plays us tough. You know, this is, this is our second road trip in a row. You know, when the schedule came out, you know, we all looked at it and we're just like, okay, we're going to Seattle, then we're going to New England. You know, then the Brady suspension came out, and it's like, okay, he's going to do the four games. You know, that that's a huge prop for Miami. Let, let's admit it. I mean, when, when we all knew Brady was going out, it's like, all right, we have a shot. So then we watched the Jimmy G show. So I thought the kid did well. And I always predicted he would. I mean, we talked about it on, on our show as well. Bill Belichick's just an outstanding coach. No matter how much we hate him down here in Miami because we have to face him twice a year, he just has this knack with these backup quarterbacks to get them game ready. And like they said, do your job. And that's their motto up there, do your job. Jimmy G came out last night, and he did his job. Miami has their work cut out for him this weekend. So we'll see what Gays can pull on the table. I mean, got to get some pressure on the kid. That's that's my number one thing. I'm going to have to get that line, get some pressure. I think, personally, Paul, I think this is a winnable game for us. I do, too. I mean, I, I do like that we have some pass coverage linebackers. Hopefully, we'll have Devontae Parker back for this game. He's expected to be suited up this week. Uh, hopefully, Jay will get over whatever Jay is going through. Because, let's face it, we could sure use a Jai out there to spell Foster, especially in some of the shorter yardage situations. There's a handful of things. We're not expected to have Pouncey back. But Steen should be holding down that line just fine with him out, like he has been all preseason and Mm -hmm. throughout the game against Seattle. What do you expect in the trenches here from this? I know we talked a lot on our last show about how Miami really won the battle in the trenches against Seattle, and and I know you were talking about putting pressure on on Jimmy. I know the Patriots are without their starting right tackle for the year. What do you expect here in the trenches on both sides? I'm, a, I'm expecting to get some pressure. So I'm, I'm expecting Bill Belichick to kind of adjust to that, probably watch our game film a little bit from Seattle because he, you know, he's that type of coach. So I expect him to, to look at these films, know Miami scheme a little bit, put some screens in there. We always have a tough time against the screens. So I would expect to see a different, a little bit different offensive calls from Bill Belichick. I'm just trying to think of with Kronk back, like you said, it opens up another dimension for them. It gives us, you know, like you said, our linebackers really have to pay attention to Kronk. So it, it, it might give Jimmy G a little bit more time because we're always constantly going to have to, to watch Kronk and know where he is. And this is the Dolphin team. Remember, sometimes we can lose track of guys. and These guys run wide open and we're looking at each other going, okay, how do you not cover him? So the guys are going to have to be on point. They're going to have to know, you know, where Kronk is at all times. And let's face it, he'll be the target out there because they don't have that sexy wide receiver. They don't have that sexy running back. They go in, they do their jobs, hold their blocks, give Jimmy some time, and drive the ball down the field. So I think Bill Belichick's plan a little bit will be trying to get our linebackers back on their heels and, and drive our line back a little bit. No, I think that's a pretty fair assessment. I mean, it, it's they they definitely don't have the same pass rushing forte right now, Uh given Nick mm-hmm. Vich's suspension, given right. the fact that they traded Chandler Jones to Arizona. Yeah, they had three sacks in the game this past week. And, and so their offensive line definitely is, is not one that, that I expect to be ready for our defensive line and, and really vice mm-hmm. versa. So if we're able to get pressure and we're able to keep their defense out, I really think this game could be a lot more winnable than, than the Seattle game was. We left 13 points out on the field in the Seattle game. And looking at that, I don't think Gase is going to let them forget that this week. I don't expect to see a repeat of that. So this could be the first time in a while we get, we come up to New England, which is right in my backyard, and and, right. and get that win. God hope. So I don't have to listen to all the New England fans up here this week. <laughs> <laughs> now, one of the things that, that stood out in this past week's game, our secondary was a lot better than anybody expected. I know we expected really good play out of Rashad and IAQ. I think they right. both went up above and beyond. But really, Byron Maxwell and Xavier Howard were phenomenal for the most part in this game. I what do you so expect too. with 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 Chris? What's that? I, I do too. I thought I, you know, I I was oh. one of those ones that was very on the fence about our our secondary. I was a little worried. I'm gonna be honest with you. I was worried. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you there. <laughs> it, it's, 
I didn't expect them to perform as well right out of the gate. I think it helps having some of the, the coverage over the top from IAQ. And really, you look at the job Kiko Alonso did in coverage. I mean, there were some plays where I was amazed to see him step for step with, with a player far downfield that you wouldn't normally expect to see from a linebacker. I think that adds a lot of flexibility and, and really covers up some of the gaps in play styles from some of our, our corners. So I think that's another boon here. And outside of Edelman, outside of Hogan, I'm not going to say Amendola because, let's face it, he, he's okay sometimes. You've got Gronk and those two that are really right. easy lights out guys for that receiving core. Does anybody else really scare you in that receiving core here? or is They really don't. I, I can honestly tell you, I, I am not. I, I feel a little bit more comfortable going up against this, this receiving core because, like I said, I do think our line can get some penetration, um, which will hopefully cause Jimmy G to pass a little early. I mean, I think we got some turnover potential here. We just can't let Hogan slip around us. I mean, he's a little dude. I mean, you know, we had him down here, 7-Eleven. He's always open. The guy just has an incredible knack to get open. So we, we're going to have to really, really clamp down on him. I'd like to see him kind of play a little bit closer, not so far off of him. So I think that's going to be things. But like I said, Kronk is going to be the big dimension here. Because like I said, you're going to need to know where he is at all times. But Rashad Jones, <laughs> I love him. He is everywhere. So, you know, I kind of expect him to take control of that secondary, let everybody know exactly where everybody is. Um, I'm expecting, like I said, a whole lot of improvement from from last week. We, we can't kill ourselves, and that's been our, our Achilles heel. You know, we have this incredible knack to beat ourselves. I mean, we have to let them beat us, and we can't give them any opportunities can't give them the lead. We can't give them any advantages. You know, and one of our advantages is we have this incredible knack to get ourselves in third and long situations. We need to get ourselves in, in short yardage. You need to get, you know, like you said, the Jayu would help. I don't know what's going on. I mean, he hasn't said anything, but that would be a great one-two punch. You know, and if he can't, then let's get Drake more involved. You know, he had a great preseason, showed some pretty good things. Pete, I know, was inactive. I know that upset a lot of you. Miami got peed, whatever you guys were saying. Um, so. <laughs> you got peed on. You got peed on. There you go. Uh, I knew it was something like that. So it would be interesting to see if we could, you know, maybe get him active and see if we can, you know, bust some holes up in, in the offense and, and get some good yardage. But, you know, this is a, a winnable game. But we have to you play 60 minutes of football all four quarters. Defense and offense. I mean, our defense plays well. It seems like our offense stutters. Our offense plays well. Sometimes our defense stutters. You know, I'm waiting for that one game where we get the total package of offense and defense. And this this Miami team has to, to take Billy and the talent to do that. Yeah, no, I, I'd agree with you on that. It, it's This stuff, this past week, Miami looked like a team that's trending in the right direction. And Miami mm-hmm. and New England, no matter – how far at either end of the spectrum either team is, because being from New England, I very well remember when New England was at the bottom end of the spectrum. And it still seems every time these two teams play is a slugfest with occasional, occasional blowouts mixed in. But for the most part, these teams play up against each other, play down to each other, whichever way you want to look at it, depending on the scenario and the timing of the year. So I expect this is going to be a great game. I'm excited for uh, the Dolphins Rhode Island fan club because I know they got a good group going up there, which I'm absolutely nice. jealous. Of. They're getting a uh, – I don't know if you've met the guys from the Dolphins RI group. They actually have a wing bar that they have their, uh, their get-togethers at. The guy that runs the club nice. actually is a co-owner of the bar. Crazy flavors of wings, like – just unreal. They've, they've gone up to Buffalo and won up there, which is something Miami hasn't done in a while. So it's nice to see some Miami group up there winning something for their win competitions. But they're they're doing a big old tailgate. So it's it's pretty cool. It's, I know a lot of folks going up. Sounds like they're going to have a great time. And hopefully, having been to Foxborough way too many times, hopefully they don't have to walk out with that crowd, letting them know that, that Miami lost. Hopefully it's a little bit more of a... Uh, somber Patriots crowd that they're walking out with. But, so will you be uh, there at the game, Paul? I will not this week. Uh, okay. okay. I, it's, the Pats have drastically overpriced their tickets. They've oh. drastically overpriced their parking. And 
it would actually cost less, believe it or not, for me to fly down to Miami, stay a night, go to a game, and come home than it would for me to go to a game up here. Wow. So any Dolphin fan that wants to complain about ticket prices, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> call Paul. <laughs> I under call Paul. <laughs> you, no, you're no not going to catch a sympathetic shoulder <laughs> from me on that. It's my, my, oh. my father, just to pull back a little bit, my father mm-hmm. used to split season tickets up there, and I actually told him that there was no point to it anymore. I mean, this is insane. The, the wow. cost associated with mm. New England. When, when they lost the Super Bowl to the Giants, when they lost the Super Bowl to the Giants, that was the year that we pulled out, mainly because essentially the Giants' average ticket prices went from 82 a seat to 87 a seat that year after winning the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Our tickets, four seats of, were a buck 25 a seat that season, jumped to a buck 75 a seat that off season. This is years ago. Right. Parking is somewhere in the neighborhood of $60 for a regular season game. It's the only stadium I've ever been to where the owner got on the radio station and actually told folks that they weren't in the parking lot yet, they might as well turn around and go home because they didn't plan for the snow that was there for three days. All kinds of just craziness, and it's just not a worthwhile place to go anymore. I'd rather go to MetLife Stadium, see Miami play the Jets with the fan clubs down there, and this is nothing against the fan clubs up here. Dave Dave knows I go and see a couple games with them every year at their bar. But it's just, it's bad. It's and you know it's just not worth worth the time. Um, but anyway, that that's enough about my experience in Foxborough. <laughs> I found everybody that's going. Um, so good luck, we, 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 talk, <laughs> we we've talked a lot about this being a very winnable game. What's your final prediction for this game? Uh, if we don't make any mistakes. Get Devontae Parker back. Couple unique play calls. Um, I can see us winning this game by three points. Um, I would probably even say like maybe 28 to 24, something like that. I think it's going to be another fourth quarter win or loss. Um, I think we'll keep it close because I think we just improved that much with, with this coaching staff. And I think they put the guys in the right places. Um, I know that was a big thing last year where guys just weren't, you know, put where they, they needed to be. So this coaching staff seems to have a little bit more of a handle on where guys need to be. Injury-free, please, you know, let's get the injury bug out of here, um, keep everybody healthy. I think, like I said, it's a very winnable game, and I, I can see us coming out with a three-point win and stay in pace with them. And, you know, I think you hit on it a little bit earlier. If we come out of this with a win, we – potentially could be tied for first place in the AFC. I know it's only game two, but, you know, for Dolphin fans, that, that would be a huge step for us. <laughs> now, I'm going to bust your stones on this one a little bit. Not because Sorry. you predicted Miami to win, and not because you almost hit exactly what my prediction is for this game. My, just for those listening, my prediction is 27-24. Dolphins okay. actually win this one. Andrew Franks kicks a game winner. Thumbs up. Oof couple of sacks. One job, kicker. You have one job. I always say that. One job. My (laughs) busting your stones on this is going to be multiple times in there you talked about it being the three-point win for the Dolphins here. And then you said 28-24 and then you repeated three-point win. Do you know where I'm going with this? Yeah, well, we can can throw a safety in there. Okay, get us a safety. (laughs) Let's go two-point game. (laughs) That's a four-point four prediction I you're know, calling I it a three-point win. My three points. Over three points is kind of what I mean. The spread. Three-point spread. How about that? We'll make it on the, we'll make it on the three-point spread. All right. Yeah. All right. I'll let, I'll let you slide on that. We'll, we'll, I, I we'll like make that it. We'll, we'll go. It's, I, I like that we're both in the same neighborhood on that. Yeah. Um, any final thoughts before we get off the air here? No, I don't. I, you know, like I said, I just – 
think that we need to keep it positive. I think, you know, with the coaching staff going up, we, we, we're going in the right direction. This game will be a, a good good test for Gase. Um, you know, he's a rookie as well, if you think about it. Head coach, first-year head coach. I mean, he's learning the ropes. Time management, got to keep it on the clock. You know, I know he's dictated a lot of that to, to, to uh, Darren Rizzi, our uh, special teams coach. So he's been helping him a lot. So it's just going to be, you know, another tough challenge for us. You know, two back-to-back road games, we didn't expect much coming out. I mean, so I think we showed positive play. Just can't kill ourselves. Got to, got to, got to score. Get in the red zone, we've got to score. Can't get in the red zone and settle for three. We've got to get the ball in the end zone, especially against this team. Yeah, I'd agree with you on that. It, it, it's absolutely critical that Miami doesn't make some of the same mistakes that they did this past week. Gets out there, plays, plays hard-nosed football gets in that end zone, and really makes Jimmy uncomfortable in that backfield. Mm-hmm. That, that is going to be one of the biggest keys, plus Tannehill being able to grow off of what he did do last this past week. And, you know, Darren Riz is a very prideful, very uh, vocal person, and he, he's going to get that special teams group back into shape here for this coming week. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing this, what the special teams brings as well. So, anyway, folks out there, uh-huh. we're We'll uh, we'll have our social media info down below if you want to check it out down in the show yeah. notes. And uh, on behalf of myself, Paul Pickin, Lisa Johnson, NFL female on the fin side, all those good places. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll talk to you soon.